92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. We're going to be streaming this audio live on RTC Channel 5, and Scott's in the studio, so we'll have video of today's program on RTC Channel 4. Hi, Scott. Hi, Tom. There you go. See, Scott's in the studio today. And if you download the TuneIn Radio app, take us wherever you happen to be going. Maybe you're going to see John Alley today at Woodlawn Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. As we get this started, I do want to talk about the Doc Talk program coming up tomorrow. We have Dr. Brubaker coming in. That'll be at 9.30. We're going to talk about vaccinations. And then for the month of October, we have Karen Cook, Dr. Karen Cook from Akron talking about allergies. And then on the 20, that'll be on October the 8th. And then on the 22nd, we have family nurse practitioner Maureen Neely. And she'll be talking about the importance of keeping your blood pressure in check. So all of those very timely programs. Yes, and, and you, know, you don't think about the blood pressure much. Everybody says, oh, it's not a big deal. But that's one of those things, if it's high, you don't know it. That's right. And it does cause damage. So yeah, that's something on a regular basis. You know, you need to make sure, what's my blood pressure doing? Because it can sneak up on you and you don't even know it. And over time, can cause some serious health uh, problems. So absolutely, uh, Maureen will kind of give you maybe some things to look for. But I think the best part is just every now and then get your blood pressure sure. checked. Well, you know, in talking about tomorrow's program with Dr. Brubaker, vaccinations are still critically important. They're very, very important because, you know, we just see a lot of different new bugs coming out. So as you get these vaccinations, that helps long term. The, the kids, as they're growing up, prevents them from getting some of these illnesses. And I know there's, you know, controversy. Some f people say, no, I don't want any vaccinations. Others say you have to get them. Um, you know, it's, I, th I think it's very important. I think Dr. Brubaker will also stress, you know, he really recommends that you do get your vaccinations. And when uh, Dr. Cook's in, it's a good time of year to talk about allergies. Absolutely. <laughs> I can attest to that here the past few days. Uh, they've uh, picked all the corn oh, out by where I live, so it's been uh, the runny eyes, runny nose, and right. a little bit of sneezing going on. By the way, those programs are open, and if you'd like to make a phone call to the station, have us ask a question of the particular doctor or nurse that's here. 223-6059 is the number to use. John Alley in the studio, President and CEO Woodlawn. Good morning. Good morning. Again, the board in session yesterday. Yes, had our board session yesterday. Uh, it was kind of another nice board meeting. Not a lot to go over. Just did some updates with them and talked about uh, more of the future. You know, what do we want to do? And, and maybe change the scope of how we actually conduct our board meetings. It's, right now, it's a lot of retrospect. We kind of look at what happened. Would like to move that more. What do we need to do as we start looking to healthcare? Because it changes pretty well. It seems like every hour, <laughs> uh, every something, day anyway. something <laughs> new is coming out. So what we really need to do is let's prepare now for where we need to be six months, a year from now. So maybe change some of that focus. We'll try to bring somebody in after the first year, kind of facilitate with us, sit down, and say, how do we do that? How do we become more of a forward-looking instead of a retrospective-looking board? And what's that going to take? And how do we? do that and how to change our agenda. Is it even possible to plan five years out of the line, two uh, years, five you, years, whatever? You can, but what we found, uh, usually within a year, everything's out of date. So it's very difficult, but what you do, you do need to do at least a three year. Five years might be stretching a little bit, but you can get a pretty good idea of what road you want to take in the next three years. And then as you go down it, then uh, you know, fine tune it a little bit as you go. But let's set the general parameters. Okay. Maybe know what county you want to be in, and as we move forward, you know, move it down to the cities and the streets. But uh, I think it's imperative that we have to start be very forward thinking today because of, of the changes coming. What do we need to do to prepare this hospital to meet the needs of this community as we progress into the future? And there is a lot that is changing, uh, whether we talk about Obamacare, whether we talk about health insurance in general, things like that change all the time. Yeah, and I think the, you know, what we were just discussing a little bit today with the leadership team was we're no longer an inpatient facility. The majority of our business is outpatient. And uh, I've got a, a little bit of a, uh, some in information was sent about change in healthcare dynamics. And we're looking now for wellness. Hospitals are going to be required to do community wellness programs. What they're willing to do is the government payers are saying, we'll pay you to keep people healthy. So we know that at some point, you know, that inpatient book of business is going to get smaller and smaller. There's a few hospitals in the state have now converted. They have no inpatient beds. All they do is outpatient work only. If you require hospitalization, they'll send you to one of the bigger, you know, bigger hospitals in the bigger cities because that's such a small portion of their business anymore. You know, now, are we looking at that? No. I think an inpatient from a community benefit is very important. A lot of folks don't want to be far from home if they're hospitalized. They want family close, friends close. But uh, there are a few 
facilities that said, you know, we just looked at the numbers. It's more beneficial for us to be outpatient only, no inpatient beds. Well, wellness work, I mean, the hospital comes out and says, you need to take a wellness plan. Here's what we're doing to help you stay well, stay healthy. But it's still going to be up to the individual. It's up to the individual. <laughs> and there's some incentives that you know, are penalties, basically, from Medicare that, you know, if we don't counsel people on smoking, and that we don't get paid. Uh, readmissions, you know, if somebody comes in with COPD and they're a smoker, you know, you got to stop smoking. They don't. They come back in 20 days later. Medicare will not pay us for that visit because they say, no, you should not. You should have counseled that person, make them stop smoking so they don't come back in. So they're putting a pretty good hammer on us to make sure we get people to change lifestyles. And I'm no different than anybody else. I'm comfortable with what I do. It's hard to make those changes. And if somebody tells me I have to do something, I'm probably not as likely to do it <laughs> than if it was my idea. I think we're all kind of that I way, I think John. we're all that sure. way. So, you know, how do we as an organization plant the seed into people and say, this is your idea, you need to change your lifestyle to be a healthier lifestyle? That's the challenge that we're going to see as we move forward. And it's, you know, a lot of folks smarter than I are trying to figure out how to do that and how do we get these people to recognize, you know, what I'm doing is bad for me. And, you know, we try to say, it's not only bad for you, it's bad for your family. You know, there are downstream effects of, you know, your illness affects not only you, but all your family members. So trying to figure out how to do that and get folks more into the wellness mindset as we move forward. Just the incentive of trying to get out there and, and, yes, and, and, and do things that you know are the correct things to do. And, and all that, it's not easy. That's <laughs> the bad easy. part. You know, if it was easy, we all could do it. We'd all be as healthy as Scott that way. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Board meeting yesterday. Board meeting. Uh, covered a couple items. Uh, Rick Dennis, who's over our... Uh, sleep studies and cardiopulmonary come in and basically requested we need to replace our sleep study equipment. Uh, what we've got now is served us well. We can no longer get repair parts and no one will work on it. So we've had, you know, we've been kind of piecing it together with spare parts that we had and it's finally to the point we're not comfortable with that. We're out of parts. So uh, did come to the board and uh, said, you know, we really need to upgrade the system. The good part is that program is uh, we're running two sleep studies a night, seven nights a week. It's, it's full. So there is a return on that investment. So uh, the board did say, okay, let's reinvest back into the sleep study program so we will have still continue with a two-bed uh, sleep study program. We're even doing some day studies now. And what we found is for those folks who work nights, they can't come in and do a night study because their body clock, they don't sleep. So we've got the room set up now. They can actually come in during the day. We've kind of got a quiet area so we can do a sleep study even during the day, which is their normal sleep time. So program's doing great, keeping everybody really busy. Uh, I think right now, Rick said, we're probably three weeks out as far as uh, booking, uh, which is a good thing to have that program that successful. So will you uh, purchase new equipment then? All new equipment, okay. new equipment, new software. Okay. Uh, from the point we placed the order, they had probably a two-week delivery time and then uh, probably a week's training time. So we're probably 30 to 45 days out from when the new equipment will be up and operational. Our what we use now is still working, but it's one of those, if it breaks, we're done. So okay. we just didn't feel comfortable trying to push that envelope any further, so we went ahead with the new equipment. We also had Dave Parrish come in from Lincoln Life, who is the, handles our 403B, which is kind of our retirement program with the hospital. Look at some changes we want to make in 2016. Um, give us a lot of options to look at. So uh, I did appoint two board members to sit down with me and let's go over all those options, we'll kind of decide what we think might be the best program for the hospital and we'll go back and make our recommendation to the full board at next month's board meeting uh, to be effective next year. It's just uh, we found we've got a very rich retirement plan, which is a good thing, but it does, there's some additional expense there that you know it's hard for us to absorb. And what we're finding out is there's a, quite a few hospitals in our area that have stopped funding their retirement plans and haven't made any contributions. You know, the employees are still contributing, but the hospital hasn't made any for three to five years. We don't want to go there. We want to continue to help and match some of the monies that the employees set aside for retirement. It's just what is the best way to go right now. And the plan we've had in effect has been there 30 years. It was developed 30 years ago. It's extremely labor intensive with trying to compute it. What we're wanting to get is a program that we can let our software program that does our payroll compute that matching for us. So, you know, uh, poor Janet, she does about uh, one and a half days per pay period manually computing everybody's contribution into that plan. Very labor intensive. So uh, give her a little bit of a break and let her just push a button and get it done. Got into the financials for uh, August. Had uh, about 10.1 million was our gross revenue. 
Uh, we wrote off 6.2 million, so it left us about 4.4 million to, for operations. Had uh, about four million dollars in expenses, so we did post a $318,000 profit for the month of August. September, we're hoping to do it again, uh, but we've seen a major shift into that outpatient as we discussed earlier. Uh, I've been watching, you know, the census and four patients, five patients, six patients. I talked to the CFO. He goes, "We're over budget on revenue. It's all on the outpatient side." So we're starting to see that that transition ourselves from an inpatient facility to an outpatient. So, uh, you know, for next year, we'll just have to budget accordingly, move more of that money from inpatient to outpatient. Still too much in terms of write-offs, John? Still too much. Uh, you know, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's, don't know how to fix the problem. Uh, we have, one of the other things we did uh, talk with the board about, we've uh, partnership with a company called ClaimAid. And they'll be in the hospital uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 to 4.30 on Thursdays 1 to 5 and Fridays 8 to 4.30. And what this company does is if you're uninsured, you can come in and they will walk you through that process and basically do everything that needs to be done to get you signed up for any of the marketplace insurance plans, the Medicaid plans, or uh, the Healthy Indiana plan. And that's a big benefit because when you really start looking, I didn't realize what was involved to try to get enrolled in these plans. It's I mean, 30, 40, 50 page applications. So, you know, it just gets daunting for somebody to say, I'm not doing it. So now we're gonna provide that service and, and say, come on in, talk to these people. <clears throat> they will walk you through, do the paperwork for you. So, you know, if it, a lot of these require you have to get a birth certificate. People, well, how do I do that? These people will do it for you. Excellent. You, you just kind of tell them, you know, where, where it was happened, they'll call and get birth certificates from those counties. So we're really excited. They started yesterday, so it's just kind of a new okay. program. Uh, the phone number, if you'd like to, you know, call and talk to them, is 224-1049. Again, they're here uh, three and a half days a week. We have also uh, offered that service for the uh, for the jail. Uh, September 1, the state told all the sheriffs, you need to counsel and you have to provide enrollment for any of your inmates who've been incarcerated 60 days or more into the Medicaid program. Well, unfortunately, most sheriffs don't know how to do that. So I talked with uh, Sheriff Sailors. I said, you know, we'll be willing to do that. So we've contracted this company another half day a week. They're going to spend, you know, uh, at the county jail helping the, the sheriff's department meet their requirement because, uh, you know, they're required to do this. That's so an was, excellent idea. It was putting them in a bind. Right. And, you know, again, we got we all work together in this. It benefits all of us. So uh, that was something we just decided right thing to do is for us to help the Sheriff's Department and, you know, do that enrollment if we can. Tell us those days again they're going to be at the hospital, John. It will be Monday and Tuesday, okay. 8 to 4.30, Thursday, 1 to 5, and Friday, 8 to 4.30. Can I just walk in? You can just walk in. Okay. You don't have to make an appointment, but if you'd like to call and talk to somebody, again, that number is 224-1049. Right. So uh, looking forward to really helping some folks get this because it, it is extremely confusing to go through that whole process. This is just a tool that uh, we as a hospital felt it was a benefit to the community to help folks that don't understand that process. An expert can sit down with them and basically do it for them. Answer a few questions, provide them a little information, and they'll get it done for you. So if, you, you know, if you've been putting it off, please come in let these folks help you get into some sort of insurance program. John Alley's president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital brings up to date on the trustees meeting that was held yesterday. Anything else on the meeting? Yes, a couple other things. Okay. Uh, reminder, flu season. Ah. Uh, it's coming around. We've actually had two confirmed cases at the hospital of the flu. So flu shots are starting to become available. Highly recommend you get with your medical provider, get your flu shots. Do they work? This year, we've been told they're going to work. I know okay. last year it was an issue. Last year was a little iffy. Right? They was really iffy last year. Okay. CDC says right now they've got... Uh, this year they've picked four strains. They're 90% sure that that's the four strains we're going to see. So uh, they're very optimistic that they've they've guessed right this year what <laughs> what strains of the flu we're going to be seeing. So, you know, get out there, get with your healthcare provider. I think even some of the uh, pharmacies in town can do health uh, do the flu shots. Highly recommend get it. Uh, Everybody thinks, oh, I'll get sick if I take that shot. No, you don't. You get Your arm gets sore, but sure. that, that's about well, it. And especially if you're a little older, too. Yes. Now, you're a pup, but, you know, older like me. Right, you know, yeah. Uh, no. um, you know, yeah, the, there's actually a double <laughs> dose for those who are over 65. <laughs> is that right? Yes. <laughs> One I, on each arm. I asked, is that just two shots? They go, no, it's a special mix. So. I see. <laughs> the other thing, uh, what we've 
wanted to do is some education for the community. Some again, we're talking wellness. A uh, couple items here. Jason C has got a, gr a grief education group that meets. They are meeting today uh, from five to six at the library. Then they've got other scheduled dates, October 7th, October 21st, November 4th, November 18th, and December 2nd. And this has been very well received by those folks who've had a loss in their family. You can sit down with other folks and just talk about it and help you work through that whole grieving process. Again, it's uh, five to six today at the Fulton County Library. Uh, no registration required and refreshments are provided. Okay. If you'd like to talk to Jason, you know, uh, about this. Again, he's at the hospital at 224-2242. Very fine young man, by the way. Absolutely. Uh, does a wonderful job. It's just amazing the difference he's made just internally in the hospital and how he's brought everybody together. And, and it's just there. If you need somebody to talk to, Jason is the go-to guy. Excellent. The other thing that we've worked with is with the uh, Purdue Extension Services and some wellness programs. The next one is going to be uh, starts is called Have a Healthy Baby. Uh, it's October 13th, 15th, 20th, 22nd, 27th, 6 to 7 p.m. And uh, you can contact uh, Megan Leininger at 223-3397 to register for that. And they're also providing, it's called Dining with Diabetes, which is a big issue in this community. We have a lot of folks who have diabetes. And the, what this program is helps you understand what can I eat to help me, you know, not have a problem with my diabetes. That will be November 9th. 13th, 16th, and 20th, 9.30 to 11. And again, uh, get with Megan to uh, schedule that, and it will be held in classroom A and B at the hospital. Okay. So again, some healthy programs there, they're free. Please, please come take advantage of them. They're to your benefit. Again, as we look to this wellness, what can exactly. we do to help you get there? Right. And you know, you mentioned even earlier, John, the sleep study, that's a wellness thing. That is a wellness, it's surprising how many folks don't realize they have a sleep disorder uh, where that you know you wake up tired well there's a reason your body is fighting itself you know during the night sleep studies help us identify what's going on during your sleep process and then prescribe what can we do to help fix that a lot of it's just a breathing issue and a lot of folks you know will get on the CPAP machines the breathing machines and it just helps keep a positive airway and all of a sudden they say wow I wake up I'm I'm not tired because I've been able to sleep all night I've not been fighting trying to catch my breath so Beneficial program, uh, again, you can talk to your, your health provider okay. about it, or even call Rick at Rick Dennis at the hospital okay. if you have questions on, you know, what's some things I should look for. I know uh, they're real busy, and uh, we even got some now take-home units where you can take them home with you, and it's not as diagnostic, it's more of a screening program, but you can take that unit home where you're more comfortable. Let's do the screening, see if you need a full-blown study or not. If so, come into the hospital and, and get whatever we need to get you fixed so you can get a good night's sleep. John, last question. Uh, last time we were here, we talked a little bit about looking into the future for Woodlawn. We've talked a little about that today, but one of the things that you had indicated that you'd like to do down the line is redo some of the rooms. Yes. Uh, you know, we're probably right now building the cash reserves. What I don't want to do is go out and have to borrow money to do that. I like to keep our, our debt as low as I possibly can. So we've been, uh, you know, just like anybody else at home, we've just putting a little money away sure. every time we can, kind of into a special fund. Hopefully we can start revisiting that late this year, early next year, because it's going to be a long-term plan to do that because we can't take the rooms out of service. So we probably do two to three rooms at a time, which might take six months. So it could be five, six, seven year process. But you know, let's get started, let's get the architects in, how are we going to do this, get me an estimated price, and start moving forward. So I, I'm pretty sure I'll feel comfortable late this year, maybe early spring next year, at least start that process, bring them, the architects back in, let's revisit the plan that we did a few years ago, make sure it's still meeting our needs because again, changing healthcare, right. you know, if we're seeing a uh, decline in our inpatient business, do I want to keep all those rooms as inpatient rooms or do I want to convert some of them to maybe more outpatient? So, you know, it's kind of good maybe we didn't do a big project five years ago as we're seeing this change now in how we deliver healthcare. John Alley, President, CEO, Woodlawn Hospital, and you're doing a great job for the community. Keep up the good work. It's, it's not me, it's my staff. Uh, uh, you surround yourself with excellent people. They make me look really good. I think good. it bears repeating again the high remarks that you got from CMS the other Yes. Uh, you know, not too long ago. Yeah, and again, it's the staff. Right. Uh, you put good people out there doing good things, everybody benefits. And uh, so I got a staff that makes me look really, really good. <laughs> John Alley, thanks very much for being here. Scott? 
Thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. From a baby's first steps to walking your daughter down the aisle, so many of life's precious moments are spent on our feet, and every step you take contributes to a healthier heart. By walking briskly for just 30 minutes a day, you can lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. So join us and take the first step to a healthier, longer life. The American Heart Association. Life. Life is why. The Akron Medical Center is accepting new patients. Call today and take the first step to a healthier heart.